Welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the DIY classes that I'm putting together and the books that I am reading for those. Um, this is, uh, I'm, I'm crocheting. Uh, if you came from my last video, you'll know that I just posted or did a goals video where I was working on crocheting my book blanket while talking about all that and just started to really go in on this particular project. So I'm sort of pantsing a video on it. I don't have an outline. Um, so if it's rambly, it is what it is. Um, one of the things that I am going to be doing this year is basically doing classes, uh, like from home that I'm doing myself. Um, a couple of them are based off of uh, MIT's open source classes and one of them is one that I created myself. Um, specifically I'm going to be doing intro to black studies, memory, culture, and forgetting, and um, a global queer class that kind of focuses on language and identity. Before I get into the classes themselves I did want to talk about kind of the this process of make, putting together these classes. Um, my big reason, um, for wanting to get into this is because I really want to get back into writing. Um, if you're looking to kind of educate yourself and learn, there are plenty of lecture series, um, especially on different intro classes. Um, I think some like history classes. So that's, that's a great way to be able to do this, but I, um, really wanted to read because that's, a really big hobby of mine. Um, so I wanted to be able to incorporate reading and really start back with writing. I do have a background in academics. I've got um, an English degree, um, which I got a psychology minor and did the majority <laughs> of uh, an education minor. Um, and then I have a master's in sociology with a certificate in women's and gender studies. My uh, thesis was on queer language usage, um, specifically looking at kind of identity labels outside of your standard LGBT. And that very much colors kind of some of the stuff that I'm going to be uh, delving into. And I also have a background teaching at a college level, uh, gender studies and sociology. And I have also done um, a variety of uh, English classes in a homeschool co-op setting and English and actually sociology and gender studies in a online setting with uh, mostly elementary and middle school age kids. Um, so that's my background just for context and um, stuff like that. Understanding where I'm coming from kind of making some of this. So one of the things that I wanted to say about making these classes or doing these classes um, as much as um, you know it's I do think it's really good that places like MIT are doing sort of these open source classes I think that that um, calling it an open source class is a little deceptive um, just because this is more like posting your syllabus with a couple of extra goodies, uh, at least the ones that I looked at. Um, some of them had lecture notes or PowerPoints, which didn't really do much without a video. Um, or they had some things that were clickable links, or they had lectures for some of the classes. None of the ones that I looked at, granted, maybe, you know, the physics department has it together or something and I just didn't look at those. Um, but a lot of them aren't really totally, you know, open source classes. I have gone through with the classes that I did and, um, uh, you know, they will, they cited the article and I was able to go and find the article. But the majority of the time, the only reason I was able to get the article is because I have a login to a different university. Um, without that, I think it would be a lot harder to find them. And even with some of them, because it's different universities, um, uh, 
like their university is different from the one that I'm associated with. I wasn't even able to get all of the readings and uh, did have to sub out um, and stuff like that. I also, um, not a lot of them had all the lecture components. For some topic that you wanted to do, like I mentioned, it would be easy enough to find a lecture series uh, for some things, but for others, like with the memory class, that's such a specific class, it's kind of hard to find lecture stuff on. And I say all of this not to discourage anyone, but just to say, like, if you have been trying to do these sorts of classings and you're like, why is this so hard? It's, it's not you. It really is like not easy to piece together. I've spent a really long time compiling this because I also had to schedule it. And, um, I'm adding in some of my own stuff too, because I want to, and a lot of these classes, a lot of classes in general are like reading sections, reading chapters. And I kind of want to go a little bit further and read some of these things from cover to cover, not all of them. There are a few reasons that I kind of want to take classes this way. One of them is just to kind of get back into it. I really love learning. I mean, I have a book channel. I'm a, a nerd. Um, but school is expensive and stressful. I had major, major burnout um, after grad school. And then I was um, also a teacher and that's like zero home life balance, at least the way that I, uh, it was, it was just not good. All that resulted in major burnout, like wasn't really eating right or taking care of myself or my house at all. Um, embarrassing to be honest. Um, but now that I've had some kind of time away and whatnot. Uh, I'd like to figure out how to get into that sort of thing, including especially the writing component. Um, because as much as I'm still like reading, I'm, it's not like I'm not learning anything or what have you, but I'd really like to get back into the kind of writing component. So at this point, I'm going to talk about kind of each class. I'm not going to be going into all of the journal articles just because that would be like a lot, a lot. I'll mention some about uh, how much I added versus what was already there. And then I'll talk about the books. So the first one I'll start with is the Black Studies class. I um, am, I guess, modifying the uh, Black Matters MIT open source class. And I'm going to be taking that with my partner, which is great because we get to actually like share our writing and kind of have like uh, accountability partners, um, and all of that. Now I modified, uh, this and added some books. Um, I say I, most of these books, my partner added, I just organized when we were going to read them, um, because they're very knowledgeable on the topic. So we took some books that they'd read, some books that they are planning to read. This class largely focuses on language. So this semester will be very language heavy for me. Um, the first part of it more focuses on language and then it goes really hard into Haiti. Um, and then kind of has a couple of other things towards the end. So the base textbooks for the class are, um, Haiti, the aftershocks of history by Laurent Dubois and then other required readings for the class. Um, are Benito Serino by Herman Melville, which I have on the way, or maybe I'm borrowing from the library. I forget at this point. The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and Farming the Bones by Edward Standicat, which is on its way. There are a couple of books that have excerpts, um, for this class that I do plan on reading. Um, The Black Jacobins, I'm going to be reading all the way through for the class and um literacy reading the world reading the word and the world um i um i'm gonna read the excerpts for the class and then probably off right after the class i'm going to just read the whole thing and then another book that um we'll be reading part of for the class is tales of the very on um which is just worth mentioning i guess um i don't actually know this is the one that i don't have a timeline for um, 
just because I'm back and forth about the um, order that I'd like to read Samuel R. Delaney in. But the books that were added to the class, again, mostly not by me. However, I'm reading them, so I'm talking about them here. Um, we've got some Carter G. Woodson. We've got more Samuel R. Delaney. And I think it's worth noting that the Samuel R. Delaney we're going to be reading similar time. Um, I think maybe immediately before or after Toni Morrison, so that should be really neat. We're going to be supplementing from uh, Moving Against the System. This isn't one that's a full read, but it will be an almost full read that will probably, you know, I'll probably end up reading the rest of it after the class is over. Like I said, a lot of the class focuses on Haiti, so um, along with the Black Jacobins, we'll be reading... Um, the Common Wind, Afro-American Currents in the Age of the Haitian Revolution, and Rasta and Resistance from Marcus Garvey to Walter Rodney. I've also got uh, Marxist-Leninist Perspectives on Black Liberation and Socialism by Frank Chapman. Um, and then uh, the final book is, I think, obviously adjacent, but uh, during a part of the class, they do talk about Asian Americans and um, immigration and things of that nature. So I have added in model minority imperialism, which has been on my TBR for a minute. Um, and I'm excited to actually see what it's going to be like. And I think it will be um, also really interesting to read situated in with all of this um, and with some of the stuff in my queer global class. Now for this class, um, the teacher did include some lectures but they were only the last couple of lectures um so there are a lot of classes that don't have any i managed to find um some of the classes there were guest lecturers and i was able to find some online lectures from those lecturers that i was able to add into the class but the majority of the classes i only really have reading material for um and the um, extracurricular you know there's some links outside like web pages and stuff that they actually did link to um i will probably or i'm actually most certainly be watching and listening to other stuff outside of this as well um uh since i'm doing this class with my partner there's i think going to be a little bit more pantsing involved just because uh i oh uh, i think that we tend to do things kind of differently so like I've got to pre-plan it all for myself even if I'm not going to follow the schedule strictly they're going to kind of find stuff at their own pace and we're going to come together and it's going to be good and um they already have I think a lot of things in mind like I know there's um at least one documentary that we've talked about watching together and a lot of other things so we'll be doing some looking through some of the podcasts that we listen to and um people that have written books on the topic, seeing who has lectures online and the like. Um, I kind of expect to finish in September, maybe early August if we take our time with some of the papers, but I think it's going to be really good, especially being able to read all of those, and there's a good mix of nonfiction and fiction, which should be really great. The next class is also, again, we're going to MIT Open Source. This is the uh, Memory, Culture, and Forgetting class, which, uh, focuses on sort of like collective memory, how we remember, um, and also how like, I guess forgetting is kind of a piece of that as well. And I thought that this was interesting, just generally speaking, um, uh, especially because I'm thinking about the intersection of sociology and history a lot. And I think that it's particularly salient, um, in, uh, the conversations that are being had about Palestine and Israel, because a lot of, you know, as much as there are like literal bombs and stuff like that, there is a lot of really insidious stuff happening, um, in terms of collective memory and memories of society, um, destroying, uh, physical places or rewriting history, um, on on Israel's part you know uh it's very easy to go and read letters and diaries of the original Zionists and settlers 
Um, so I thought that this class uh, was interesting and also particularly um, relevant to a lot of stuff that I've been thinking about and things that I think are really important to understand. It's also very pertinent, I think, looking at history of any location, America in particular, like the amount of like American exceptionalism that's infused into history and uh, the amount, the way that indigenous history has also been taken away in uh, similar sort of ways. It's an important topic. So this one I am doing a kind of less adding. For this class I am going to be reading in full a couple of the books that you're only supposed to read parts of um, and then I have uh, added just one book. So the books that I'm waiting on, I don't have copies yet but they're in the mail, is Recollection, Art, Media, and Social Memory by Richard Reinhardt and John Ippolito, and On Collective Memory by Maurice Halbox. Those ones are typically a little bit more expensive, um, but I was lucky to find each of them for less than ten dollars, uh, because I like buying used books. Um, so those are the two main required readings of the class. There is also How Societies Remember by Paul Connerton. This, I think, only parts a uh, part of this um, was required for the class, but I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole thing. It's very small. I don't see how I cannot. Um, the same goes for Posthumous Papers of a Living Author. Also, Tangled Memories, The Vietnam War, The AIDS Epidemic, and The Politics of Remembering. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that the AIDS epidemic is uh, one of the focuses of some of my topical TBRs that I have. So I've read a fair amount on it. I um, am interested in reading much more on it. So of course I'm going to be reading this whole book instead of just the couple of chapters that were recommended for the class. Um, and I think that this book is also going to be a very good kind of segue into a lot more of my AIDS epidemic TBR. Um, which is why I'll also be reading this book during the class, After Silence, um, A History of AIDS Through Its Images. Now for this memory class, there were no lectures, I think, on there at all. Um, so what I have done, um, I do have an intro lecture that I've been able to find. Like this class is kind of more niche, like there, it's not, since it's not just an intro class, it's harder to find like a lecture series or something like that on it. So this class is actually going to be primarily reading. The only exceptions are that uh, three films that um, were already scheduled into the class. I think there might have been four, but I couldn't access one of them. Um, but the other ones are on Tubi. Uh, actually, I'm not sure about the very last one, but we'll see when we get there. So no lecture components, just reading. This is the one class that I think I'm actually going to finish like in May like a normal class. Um, so that should be good. So the final class that I have is my global queer class that's focusing kind of on language. This is one that I completely put together. Um, like I said, this very much fits, fits like my niche uh, interest. So that's like how I've been able to put it together. I just, I have books that I want to read and I know how to find the stuff on it. For this, I do have quite a few PDFs as well because I was able to research and find some stuff. So I will be supplementing with that. I also have a fair amount of videos um, and some podcasts as well. Now, some of the videos and podcasts, most of them I expect to be good, especially because a lot of them I found through like looking up like Susan Stryker and stuff like that. Like people that I know are good or people... Like I've got a few lectures from authors of the books that I'm reading or people who authored some of the pieces, um, the like uh, academic articles that I'm reading. So that should be good. Um, and then I have a lot of books. This class is probably going to be the one that takes the longest. So I will be finishing it in September, August or September. Um, that sort of thing. So I will start with the books that I'm 
going to be reading part of. Um, I do have a couple of general reference books that I'm going to be looking into, um, courtesy of my partner who, um, is just as, like, ridiculous about books as I am, and I love it. I have two other books that I know specific chapters that I'm going to be reading from, um, uh, Black Queer Studies, A Critical Anthology, and as we have always done, Indigenous Freedom Through Radical Resistance. I plan on reading sections for this class, but also I plan to read these in full after the class, so this is still kind of in TBR territory. One of the books that I will be reading a lot of readings of, I'm not sure. I don't think that I have the whole book planned in, but I will probably read the rest of the articles after the class just so that I can, you know, have read the whole thing. Um, and that is Queerly Phrased Language, Gender, and Sexuality, which is a book that I found while trying to research um, articles for this class. I really wanted to find a textbook or something to kind of guide in some sort of way, um, since there was no class, no lecture series. And this is like the main one that I could find. It is dated. This is published in 1997. Um, a lot of the books that I have are newer, so that's good. It kind of balances itself out a bit. The books that are the primary reason that I kind of started this particular focus um, for this class, kind of the ones that build the foundation of it in some ways, are Speaking in Tongues, Globalization, and Gay Language, which is an anthology that I have had for a really long time and actually meant to look more into when I was doing more research, but like for my um, thesis initially, but I wasn't really taking a global approach and I just didn't have time. A lot of things were happening. Grad school's a lot. Um, so I'm going to be reading it now along with The Pink Line, um, Journeys Across the World's Queer Frontiers. Now, Speaking in Queer Tongues was published in 2004, um, so it's a little bit older, but The Pink Line was published much more recently. This one was published in 2020. Um, so we, I think that pairing these together is really good on multiple accounts. And um, I think the timeline of the class in terms of like which places I'm looking at uh, follow more along the lines of the pink line. Um, but anyways, these both uh, they have a lot of overlap on places that they cover, but there are some that are a little bit different. So I think they complement each other well, kind of in all of this. And the rest of the books that I'm going to be using um, were already on my TBR, um, with one exception, but that one I also organically found at a bookstore, uh, and it just happened to kind of fit with what I was looking at for this. Um, so... I think with the exception of the textbook that I'm using for this class, everything else I already had on my shelf, which is really cool. Um, we either had on my shelf or had on my radar in some capacity. And so I'm going to be reading What's Your Pronoun Beyond He and She, which is a history uh, in the English of the English language, like pronoun usage and contemporary usage uh, with, with, I think, probably a particular focus on they them but it also goes into like neo pronouns and stuff like that after that i'll be reading before we were trans by kit ham um uh which looks at kind of these ideas of gender globally um or in different locations around the globe um in the past then the next book i have is lavender and red liberation and solidarity in the gay and lesbian left so this is looking at um kind of the, the politics um and this also has a global look i think it's going to be really important in tying together a lot of the class especially looking at the different um editions in terms of like scholarly papers and stuff you can't really see from the full books but i do have a lot that looks at um stuff like pink washing which again thinking about a lot of issues that are coming up um, or really becoming more of a public discussion with Israel and Palestine, that is a really, pinkwashing is a really big tactic that Israel is using and kind of like understanding 
that um, like using homophobia as a reason to commit genocide is not only like ridiculous, but um, is also kind of ahistorical. Um, and the same thing can be said um, when looking at other countries too. There's um, uh, both using homophobia and misogyny as a reason to invade or to call a certain group an enemy versus another. Um, when the call is coming from inside the house, uh, a lot of these places would not be, would not have the level of misogyny or homophobia if they hadn't been colonized in their original kind of structures, um, kind of taken out to begin with. But anyways, rambling. Lavender and red. Um, and I was really happy. I think these four books, I was able to find lectures from the author. Um, I'm actually not too positive about what your pronoun, but the rest of them, I know for sure I was able to get lectures from the author to watch alongside. Um, I'm pretty excited for that. After that, I have by The Hidden History and Science of Bisexuality, which I actually started to read last year, but I borrowed it from the library and it had to return, so I didn't get to finish it. Um, so I'm super excited to actually get to read it now. Um, and I think that reading about some of the individual labels in the history and stuff, even if the book doesn't necessarily have a global look, is still going to inform a lot of this. Um, especially since this is a newer book. Um, it was published in 2022, I think. Or maybe this is a paperback, so it might have been 2021. But regardless, it's honestly really exciting to see books like this that are newer, that are talking about um, language in these ways, because there, well, there were some, like, um, I think I actually have back here somewhere the, I think it's called By Any Other Name, but that's more of an anthology of people's experience of bisexuality, which is super cool, but with something like this that actually kind of puts together a cohesive history and, like, it's, uh, it's very exciting, um, uh, because I was dealing in a lot of, um, like, scholarly articles and stuff, uh, and so this is just really exciting to see this. It would have been super cool to see individual books like that when I was doing kind of my thesis. Similarly, I have Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire Society and the Meaning of Sex. This has been on my TBR for a while. It, I mean, it came out in 2020 and I got it in hardcover, so that, uh, at least three years. Um, but again, this is another one that would have been so great. Um, there was one book that I was able to use on asexuality and it is a pretty cool rundown, um, and looks a lot at the community. I liked it a lot. It's been a hot minute. I probably read it in 2018 or something, but, um, I'm super excited to read this one. There are a couple more that I'd like to read. Um, uh, a lot of like, again, tying back to my personal interest and not necessarily, you know, whatever, uh, the class, but, um, a lot of the people that I, um, interviewed for my thesis were ace or on the ace spectrum. Um, and finding stuff about asexuality was like finding a, a needle in a haystack at times, like outside of Tumblr or something like that. Um, or not just Tumblr because you have Avon and, um, there are, were a variety of uh, research studies that have been done, but some of them left some to be desired. And I mean, they were just that. They were like behind academic paywalls and things like that. So it's really cool to see actual books. And also as someone who has explored the gamut of the ace, ace spectrum myself, um, uh, it's so it's also like on a personal level cool too. Um, so I'm going to be reading that one. And then the final book, um, that I'm going to be reading for this is Reclaiming Two Spirits, Sexuality, Spiritual Renewal, and Sovereignty in Native America. So I'm actually going to be ending the class with, um, the United States specifically looking at, um, Black and Indigenous experiences. Um, and then at the end, kind of like what we can do with all of this, um, which is where, this book uh, will tie really well on kind of the back end of that class um, and after the class. So that is 
uh, some of my nonfiction reading. Uh, those are the things I'm doing for my day at my class. Like I said, um, if you have any particular interest in these and want kind of more information um, outside of this, feel free to DM me on Instagram. Um, but that is all I have for this. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye.